NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Vikings and the Cards coming up next. We find ourselves at the home of the world's first retractable natural grass field as you get a look inside State Farm Stadium in Glendale. It's certainly hot outside here in the desert, but somehow this Cardinal crowd turned up the heat a moment ago. They were in a frenzy as their team emerged from the tunnel, and the Cardinals are set to do battle with the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. The Cardinals making their way out, and it's the number one overall pick in 2019, Kyler Murray at the helm. Drafted with the idea that he'd be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the NFL when he put it all together. We've been seeing that progress throughout his career. This guy's legs, we knew they were phenomenal. Arm, top notch. But now we're seeing his mind come into the game. Reed's defense is better and better each and every week and is showing patience as a passer as well. Not as eager to exit the pocket, finding guys downfield for bigger plays. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now. Second is short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. And just a yard to go here on second down. Out of the gun, here's Murray. And this is Ertz with it, right side. And he goes out right around the 39. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. That catch good for only a couple. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. On second down, Connor looking for space. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. And 
An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Here's Murray. And this is going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, here's Andy Leon to kick it away. Back deep, D.D. Westbrook. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The cards going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. From the gun, here's Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A run there with Cook not going to accomplish much. Call it no gain. Second down coming up. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers putting up their notes as close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Well, there's an example of patience being rewarded. Ran the ball on first down and got stuffed. Most people would scream, throw the ball here in this situation. They stayed with their roots, stayed with running the football, and they got rewarded. Third and short yardage, Cousins. Open man is stealing it's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. So in the Cardinal territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. From the pistol, they run it with Cook. And some space here. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 40 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Cook. 
side. He'll get this one down to about the 17. J.J. Watt, the one that gets him down. He went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. No, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Still nine remaining on second down. And off comes to Cook. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he'll get inside the 10, but he's short of the line he needed. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up four. What we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Joseph's got it. And the Vikings have a 3 0 lead. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. Joseph now to kick this one away. And no run back here for Moore. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start the drive with a give to Connor. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Going deep for Hopkins. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And that may have been incomplete, but he reminds me so much of what my dad used to take me to the baseball stadium and watch the home run hitters in batting practice. I'll get to the stadium early just to watch this kid throw it. He can throw it out of the stadium. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. He'll swing that out to Edmonds. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here, just a little slow. It, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it, any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. 
it's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Working out of the gun, Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. Looks like they've got six DBs on the field here for a third and nine. To throw is Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know. They want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Tackled by Isaiah Simmons. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Eight yards to go on second down. Cousins. That is caught by Thielen. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. In man coverage, your number one cardinal rule, don't get beat deep. And that's why the comeback route is so effective because that's how they're selling it, Brandon, taking you all the way upfield before breaking it back down. Kingsbury is saying, hey, let's take another look at that. He's going to throw down the challenge for it. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. Let's go. Let's do this. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. A first down throw for Cousins. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. That was J.J. Watt getting in there and getting him to the ground. Sports. 
The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it facing a second and long situation. Cousins to throw it. Throw caught there by Osborne. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Vikings on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. Here's Cousins. Let's it fly for Thielen. And unable to connect. Incomplete. I give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try and throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. And the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. now. Here's another first and ten. And Murray, he's going to run with it himself. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. Nine yards on the first down. Keeper it at second and one. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave it. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Now Murray off play action. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Say hello to Eric Kendricks. He gets the sack there. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. To throw, it's Murray. And that is incomplete. Andy Lee now as he's on to punt for Arizona. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better. 
than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Dalvin Cook taking the field for the Vikings' next possession. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who've been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football, and they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. They start the drive with Cook. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Cook following the penalty. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven yard line. Four yards on the pickup, it'll be second down. Typically we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? Second and five now. Cousins complete. Jefferson the target. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Shotgun, it's Cousins. Open man is Osborne, he's got it. And he will have a Vikings first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. To throw, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. A gain of six there on first. They like going to him in the slot, he catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. So second and four from the 22. Now Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down. Let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. They'll run on first down. Cook, and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Play action now, Cousins. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. A big connection on that one. 34 yards. What a dimension this man brings to this defense. He had his mind set there that he was going to get in and make that tackle. He really flew to the football. And you can just see that whole play developing. That's where, as a defender, you just lock in on your target and say, 
I'm not even thinking about breaking stride. I'm running straight for the belt buckle because where it goes, that's where you find his body. And he was able to get in there and make a great play. And exactly how fast was he going? According to Next Gen Stats, 21.7 miles per hour. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. A give. This is Cook. Cook with a first down and much more. Touchdown, Vikings! 35 yards for Dalvin Cook. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Well, what a first half he's had running the football. Another terrific run there, and this one finds the end zone. Well, we know he's a guy who's capable of coming up with big plays in the running game, and his offensive line knows it as well. That keeps them motivated, looking for those extra blocks to give him room to run downfield. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Moore now on the return. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 16. Throwing to start the drive. Murray. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays. Run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Murray a give, this is Connor. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. So first and 10 now from the 30. Shotgun now for Murray. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Second and four. Now Murray. And his throw here is incomplete. You tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. The Cardinals on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. Murray going to throw. They'll go out to the flat for Edmonds. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. Oh, 
we remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. Meanwhile, Murray's throw into the hands of Kirk. And he's brought down. But we could talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. Murray now on first down. And the catch made by Hopkins. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Let's go, baby. And this Let's has go. been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. That's caught on the left side by Kerr. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. How about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. The Cardinals into the red zone for the first time. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Murray to air it out again. To Connor on the check down. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And he'll be stopped up at the line of scrimmage with a flag down. Let's check on the call. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. A terrible spot for a holding call as he'll try again, but now from further back on first and goal. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. You be ready. Murray now to throw. Touchdown! Randall Moore from 10 yards out. And the Cardinals are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, headed into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football. Full half to be played. Prater for the extra point, and the lead is down to a field goal. Touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. And he 
you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. First down, here's Cousins. Let's it fly for Thielen. Well, this is taken in, it's complete. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen, 75 yards. And the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, get that water break and get on out there and play. Extra point splits the uprights, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Moore now to return. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Kyler Murray going to lead the Cardinals back out on offense. But a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with him, and he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, the little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. Christian Kirk, the man he was looking for, but it's going to be second down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Murray. Dancing to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. the Vikings taking the lead to the locker room as now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much and welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Vikings in that first half. And the ground game has been a big part of why they have this big lead. And you have to figure they'll lean on it a little bit more in the third and fourth quarters. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. This one fielded at the five and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Adam Thielen, he gets set to go again with the rest of this offense. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 23. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. They run it again with Cook. And he'll get about three as he takes this up near the 25. Big stop, Steve. Big stop. Let's go. Third down, Cousins lets it fly for Thielen. Tried to drop it in there, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Marco Wilson, and the Cardinals are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind, and we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys, telling the quarterback, don't worry, we got you to start things off. You take it from there. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. After the turnover, here's Murray. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Hopkins. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Second and two. Here's Murray. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Throwing now is Murray. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he'll be out of bounds, just shy of the 40. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. territory now they'll come up first and 10 at the 42 yard line to throw is Murray he finds Hopkins complete a gain of six there on first from the 35 back to work on second and four Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. 
And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Ertz has it left side. And he's going to have a Cardinals first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So first and 10 now from the 30. Out of the gun, here's Murray. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Murray now. It's complete to Hopkins. And he's going to have a Cardinals first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone, here's the Heisman Trophy winner, Murray. Escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Again, Murray will keep it. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. To throw, it's Murray. Oh, the slant complete to Green. And the Cardinals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Connor. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. James Connor taking it in from two yards out. And the Cardinals have cut it to within a score. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Now Prater to add the PAT. And this 
This is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark. This will be fielded inside the five. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Dalvin Cook taking the field for the Vikings' next possession. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on to the contact. Brings up second down. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there at the moment the ball gets to the receiver, and he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. A good action to this point in the third quarter, just a three-point game, second and ten. Now a run with Cook. Oh, what a move. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 101 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and 10. And now here's a carry heading left. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Cousins now. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Play action now, Cousins. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was trying to find Justin Jefferson there. And that'll bring up second down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Five yards, now it's third and five. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course, you <laughs> got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Cousins from the gun on third. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. 
Chandler Jones drops it for a loss of 12, and it also brings up fourth down. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football, and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass, but it's equally important to know when to throw the football away, too. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Returning it is Moore. An eight-yard return there after the punt of 47. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Now Kyler Murray ready to get back under center. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Throwing on second and eight. Murray, he'll swing that out to Edmonds. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. From the gun on third down, Murray. And that is incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Andy Lee now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. A beautiful fake. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Again, it's Cook. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 128 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, 
when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Vikings on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. To throw is Cousins. And that's taken in. It's B.C. Johnson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the red zone now, Cousins. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. But listen, when you've got the lead, there's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head, out of harm's way. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. And now offensively, it's third and 10, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. He hit his first, this one from 38. The kick by Joseph is good. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Joseph now to kick this one away. Set to return it. Here's Moore. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 16. <laughs> And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets his football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 
But that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone that has the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, that'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. On first and 10 is counter. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Working with a second and three. Murray going to throw. And the catch made by Hopkins. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. On first down, Connor. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles about the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Murray a give to Edmonds on the option. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. The Cardinals on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time they face a third and two. Here's Connor on the read option. And yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. They'll run for it with Connor. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. Just enough push up front. He only needed about six inches. He didn't get a whole lot more than that. No, but he made sure he got enough so they didn't have to worry about measuring it or making it even close. Ends up picking up a couple of yards in a situation, as you noted, where he only needed inches. First down, Murray. He finds his man complete. That's Hopkins. Seven yards, the pick up there. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Looking to throw again on second down. Murray eluding the pressure right. And Murray with a smart move there at the end of the play. Picks up the first down and then slides to the ground. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier in this draft. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. So first and 10 now from the 30. Murray now to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Hopkins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 
Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. On the handoff, Connor, and he'll get this one down to about the 17. Making the stop there, Daniil Hunter. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Touchdown, Cardinals! Zach Ertz in a 11-yard touchdown. And the Cardinals are an extra point away from taking the lead. Now they can boot it through on the always important extra point, and then their defense has to hold up their end of the bargain. And there's something that you've pointed out in numerous games that we've worked. Okay, the excitement's going on. Everyone's celebrating over there. Who's calling up the defense to make sure they're focused because they still have some work to do? Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And that is going to put them up by one, and it sets us up for quite a finish here. So that drive spans 13 plays, and the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. Touchdown, out is Prater to kick. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. So Cousins and the Vikings, down 21-20, just under two minutes to go. And they need about 35 yards to get in range for a winner as they come up on first down. to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Here's Cousins. Completes this to Jefferson. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he's going to get this deep on of Arizona's side of the field. A big play there on the catch and run. Charles, just a gigantic play right there. Absolute breakdown defensively, but take no credit away. A huge gain, and that turns things around. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Now 
nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Now Cousins. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the offense will get this one back. Boy, that could have been catastrophic at this late stage of the game, but they avoid disaster. So crisis averted, but now facing third and goal. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to take the lead here in the final minute. Joseph's got it. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there, gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. Joseph now to kick this one away. Moore now on the return. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Now it's the Cardinals' turn, trailing by two after the made field goal. A little under 50 seconds to go. Now their lead has evaporated, but they still have a shot on first down. Now Murray. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Second and 10. to throw Murray pass complete to Green and he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39 haven't heard much from him all night but welcome to the party making his presence felt in a big way they've kept him under wraps all night long but boy did he find a great time to bust out first down now but that clock rolling to throw is Murray He's going to let it fly. And he's got it. It's caught for a touchdown. And they have taken the lead here in the final seconds. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that's a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive. And they did. You're right. They got it down. Looks like they're going to be the winners. Prater on to add the extra point. And it would appear they're going to get out of here with a come from behind victory. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's capped off by the late touchdown that puts him out in front here in the final minute of the contest.
is Prater to kick. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and make it an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short in the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about if you're playing defense in this situation. We'll see if they can cover all their bases. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot.